Every night across Australia, thousands of kangaroos are being shot and killed. They have their heads and forelimbs cut off and are loaded onto trucks. Most of the animals end up as pet food or soccer boots. Kangaroos are Australia's icon and they are protected native wildlife. So how is it possible that they end up in a shoebox? And what's behind the kangaroo industry? But before we dive into our story, I really want to say thank you to Bubble, the sponsor of this video. Bubble is a top language learning app and offers 14 languages. I have downloaded the app two weeks ago and I love it. My family and I spent two weeks in Sweden. We fell in love with the country and its people. To get an insight into its culture, I started learning Swedish with Bubble. So far, I've finished three lessons and it's really fun. The courses are designed by real language teachers. You can match items to form sentences, interact in real-world conversations and listen to native speakers. Hey, hey. You can easily jump back to already finished lessons and you can set a weekly goal. It's a great way to explore a new culture. And it's scientifically proven that Bubble can help you start speaking a new language in three weeks. Hey Maya, what do I do? Also want to learn a new language? The link is right down there. And the best thing, you will get 60% off your subscription. And now back to our kangaroos. A few weeks ago, I saw this post on Twitter. The two kangaroos caught my eye, but it was the poster's caption that made me stop. I clicked on the hashtag and found an endless line of posts about kangaroo culling. Some users were telling companies like Nike to just don't do it. Others showed disturbing photos of kangaroos having their mouths shot off while still alive, or of joeys being clubbed to death. The protests weren't just happening on Twitter. Worldwide, people took to the streets to call for a ban on kangaroo products. To be honest, this topic was totally news to me. I've never heard or thought about kangaroo meat or kangaroo shoes before. But my husband told me that he has had a pair of those when he was a kid. You can easily order them online or you can buy them in a store. So I'm here in my local sports store and I found shoes that are made out of kangaroo. The salesperson told me that most of the leather soccer boots are made of kangaroo. And I guess he is right, there are plenty of them. Shoe companies often use kangaroo leather because of its high strength to rate ratio. They are preferred by soccer players hoping to bend it like Beckham. Although Beckham has switched to a synthetic alternative during his active career. Some brands advertise the shoes with extra stickers. Others use the hidden term K leather. And many others don't even mention that they use kangaroo leather. Nike are driving the commercial trade in kangaroo leather. They have up to 40% of the market. But the kangaroo industry isn't limited to bags or shoes. In fact, an entire new industry has risen. A profitable industry. Kangaroo exports are worth more than 200 million a year. Europe is the largest market for kangaroo products, followed by the US. Since 1993, kangaroo meat has also been legal for human consumption. Even here in Vienna, you can buy a roux burger. Russia used to be the biggest importer of kangaroo meat, but it has now banned imports due to an acceptable standard. Scientists found dangerous levels of salmonella and E. coli bacteria. Coincidence? Well, not really. While sheep and cattle are strictly monitored by veterinarians and butchers, there is nothing similar to kangaroos. There are no specific regulations. Kangaroos can be shot at any time and any temperature. Afterwards, they are hung on the back of a truck. The trucks are open, there is dust everywhere. Often the chillers, these are the mobile containers where the carcasses are stored, are far away. And the transportation doesn't have any cooling. These conditions would be unacceptable in any other meat industry, I guess. To understand what's happening in today's kangaroo industry, we need to see the bigger picture. Kangaroos are iconic native wildlife and important to Australia's culture and the functioning of its ecosystems. The six most common kangaroo species inhabit wet rainforests, beaches, wide open plains and also the dry center of Australia. The bounding mouthbill is one of Australia's most emblematic symbols. It appears on the country's coat of arms and its silhouette adorns the tail wing of the national airline. The Australian tourist board is also a big kangaroo fan. It just uploaded a new video featuring a kangaroo named Ruby, enjoying good days in Australia. What the ad doesn't mention is that if Ruby was an actual kangaroo, she would probably be shot right after her good day had ended and night fell. 
over the last decade in Australia, the federal and state governments have approved an annual commercial kill of some four to six million kangaroos and wallabies. On average, three million kangaroos are actually harvested. 300,000 young at foot and 800,000 pouch young are either killed or left to die each year as collateral of the commercial industry. In addition, up to 200,000 kangaroos and wallabies are killed every year for non-commercial reasons. And a further unknown number are killed without government authorization. Sounds like a lot, right? Well, it doesn't only sound like a high number. In fact, it's the largest slaughter of land-based wildlife on the planet. But why are they being killed? To answer this question, we need to take a step back. Kangaroos were eaten by indigenous people for survival. Back then, humans and wildlife lived in harmony. This changed rapidly after European settlers arrived on the continent. After British colonization in 1788, the settlers began killing kangaroos in high numbers. First for food and later, after the colony had raised enough cattle and sheep, they killed kangaroos mainly for sport. In general, settlement had a highly variable impact on local kangaroo and wallaby species. The settlers brought new predators like the red fox or feral cat and they cleared large areas of woodland for sheep and cattle herding. And so many of the smaller kangaroo species, which depend on native vegetation, declined. By contrast, larger species of grass-eating kangaroos benefited from the mass clearing of bushland. After the settlers had repressed natural predators like dingoes and installed plenty of artificial watering points for livestock, these species flourished. Kangaroos adapt to the environment. They reproduce when there is plenty of food and slow down their reproduction rate during droughts. Many farmers feared that the wildlife would now compete with their sheep and cattle for grass. They considered kangaroos a pest. By the 1880s, all of the states in Eastern Australia had created legislation for the eradication of kangaroos. Kangaroos and wallabies were declared vermin. Bounties were offered for the head of each grass-eating mausobill. Today, the perception that kangaroos are pests is still widespread, even within the government. And one big reason for this might be sheep. Australia is the largest lamp exporter in the world. The country is covered with sheep. Meat, merino wool and especially live sheep exports are a lucrative business. The industry's main argument for why kangaroos killing should continue are that wildlife is in competition with livestock, that too many kangaroos destroy the environment and that sheep are more important than kangaroos because they are important for the nation's food security. Let's work through this. According to scientists, kangaroos and sheep eat different and they only compete during extreme drought. They have also lived here for millions of years without damaging nature. Their legs are perfectly adapted to the land, unlike hard-hoofed animals like sheep and cattle, which contribute to soil convection and erosion. And talking about the nation's food security, well, Australia exports 73% of its sheep and lamb meat. All this shows how complex and divided the nation's relationship with its kangaroos is. Legally, kangaroos are protected and it is an offense to harm them. But there are exceptions to this protection. Commercial kangaroo harvesters, farmers and landlords can still kill kangaroos. Commercial kangaroo shooters are required to follow the code, which says, for example, that they have to kill the animals humanely with a single shot to the head. Farmers and landlords can also get the license to kill kangaroos. These shootings are often related to a higher level of cruelty. To get this kind of shooting permit, it often only takes a single phone call. Another thing is that kangaroos are mostly nocturnal, so everything is hidden in the dark. To really understand what's happening at night, I called Natasha Doletzal. They shine a spotlight on them and they're supposed to kill them with a, a kill shot to the head. But what happens is up to 40% are misshot. They're maimed and then they run off and either they die a slow, painful death or they're, you know, they have to be shot multiple times. It's okay for hunters to shoot a mother kangaroo and she has a joey in her pouch. The industry approved method of dispatch is to bludgeon or decapitate or stomp on their heads with uh, their boots. Animal behaviorists and scientists have 
found that joeys are starting not to play because they they live in this sort of heightened state anxiety and, and, and fear they don't relax their families have sort of been traumatized and so the play behavior and in, in joeys has decreased the one question remains how many kangaroos are still left I reached out to the head of agriculture of Australia, the commercial kangaroo management program and several offices of the kangaroo harvesting program. And this is what I got back. I also checked the IUCN red list and this was the first time not a single number was listed. It looks like nobody knows exactly. Conservationists are worried about the number of kangaroos being shot. Officially, only 15% of the population are harvested every year. But whether the current kangaroo counting system really does represent the actual population is an open question for me. And obviously not only me. And their data is obviously not being checked. It is the worst data I have ever seen. I've worked in military, medical, educational data. This is the worst ever. The current formula doesn't consider droughts or floods, nor does it account for non-commercial shooting or illegal shooting. And the number of kangaroos that are actually sighted is always adjusted by a correction factor. In the number game, David Brooks from the University of Sydney gave some examples of why this is problematic. In his research, he also points out that the decline in some species, like the eastern grey, is already alarming. But there is hope. People like Natasha are raising awareness for kangaroos. And the University of Technology, Sydney, has also created an innovative kangaroo think tank, where biologists, sustainability experts and indigenous leaders are collecting independent data. They are calling for an improved national kangaroo strategy. For me, this sounds like a good start because the current kangaroo management plan hasn't been questioned, renewed or challenged for 25 years now. It's really time for a change and it's time that we try to coexist with kangaroos. Hi friends, thanks for watching. Have you ever heard about kangaroo leather or K leather before? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the links in our description.